The Philadelphia Eagles traded up in the first round of the NFL Draft in order to take Washington State's Andre Dillard. The 6'5", 315-pound tackle has all the tools needed to become a franchise left tackle at the next level, making him the natural heir to the throne of Jason Peters. But just how NFL ready is Dillard? What can we expect come preseason and beyond? And what areas for improvement should we be looking at to see how those change over the next couple of years? My name is Liam Jenkins, it has been a while, but we are back with another episode of Eagles Film Room. Before we get started though guys, make sure you leave a like and hit subscribe if you're new to this channel and enjoy this sort of content, it really would mean a lot to us. And be sure to check out phillysportsnetwork.com, content from myself and all of our writers covering all of your favourite Philadelphia sports teams every single day. We're going to kick things off with one of my favourite parts of Dillard's play and that is his footwork. The man explodes out of his stance and can glide like he's on ice regardless of who he's lined up against. We'll see a good example of that here where he's able to sustain the block despite the powerful speed coming off the edge and you can see the legs from the defensive end constantly churning it does not stop Dillard because he's able to retain a strong center of gravity keep his back straight and keep those feet active there's a great video on the Eagles channel where Jeff Stoutland says he wants happy feet out of his tackles in certain situations that is exactly what Andre Dillard has you'll see it time and time again they keep resetting they keep adjusting and here is a fantastic example his back is straight his arm locked under the arms of the defensive end and that back foot is ready to just keep maneuvering keep resetting as his hands stay locked in it's that lateral quickness you can see him glide there it doesn't matter what the defensive ends try to do you will not win on pure athleticism alone when it comes to Dillard you have to come with technique prepared because even though Dillard may not have the finest hand placement in this draft and there are lapses in his game it's that explosiveness and constant ability to keep his feet shuffling you can see it here mirroring the player opposite him he does it so so well if you can take the frame of a bear, the footwork of a gazelle and the mental processing of a quarterback, you have Andre Dillard. Take this for example, he's going to notice the stunt, the defensive end outside peels away, his head immediately turns back inside, he gives a punch and helps his teammates out. We see this over and over on stunts and twists and whatever comes his way, through his handing off edge rushes or picking up interior linemen, that head stays on a swivel, constantly looking at what the defense is doing and because his footwork is so agile, it means he's always able to get himself in the good position to execute perfectly. Here's a brilliant highlight from a game against Oregon State and watch the footwork here straight away just short little steps, sees it coming and picks off the rogue rusher on that stunt. It's that awareness he just hands it off so seamlessly and just gets back into position as if he knew it was coming. Just slides it off, sees a spin, look at that head points forward, then takes a big step back, reshuffles his feet so they're pointing towards his target and off he goes. That is some stellar intent intelligence from a left tackle. Given how more and more defences are disguising blitzes and getting more creative with what they do at the line of scrimmage, this sort of attribute where he's so seamlessly able to just pick up whatever's in front of him will be absolutely valuable at succeeding in the next level. Sure, you want your offensive linemen to be physical, to be powerhouses, to maul whoever's in front of them, but if you can get a guy that's so intelligent that he can spot things like that where he can always get himself in a position to make a play, that's what matters. There is a reason this man allowed only one sack on close to 700 points pass blocking snaps last year and it's because of that intelligence. But let's get on to his hand placement and this is one of the few flaws you can find in his game. Here on run defense this is fantastic, he sustains the block, he lets the runner through but if we take a look at something like this against Stan, the footwork again is brilliant but watch the hands here, that inside arm is nowhere to be seen, the outside arm is almost under the shoulder blade of the defensive end and even there when you're trying to get leverage he's not the longest, he's been compared to Joe Thomas but for every Joe Thomas there are guys who lack that length you get punished at the next level so to compensate for that Dillard's hand placement the punching has to get more confident and that is something where Jeff Stoutland will be able to coach up here's an example here there should be a punch the minute the defensive end comes across his face and it just doesn't happen instead what Dillard tries to do is get his hand over the top but with his hands pointing out the elbows aren't locked in and all he's trying to do there is grab him and stop and at that point you're at a disadvantage because there's so much more momentum going in the other direction you're not punching the middle 
You're just trying to prevent the outside burst. Now, this isn't saying that his hand usage is bad. In fact, it's certainly serviceable and a great building block for Jeff Stoutland to work on. However, considering how mesmerizing those other traits are, his agility, his lateral quickness, his mental processing, in comparison, it does look a lot worse, but it certainly isn't. Here's a situation where he's able to completely handle a counter like it's nobody's business. Now, just watch the amount of grief the defensive end is giving him, and he's able to do so because of that balance, that body control. He doesn't overset, doesn't get too aggressive with his hands. Instead, he lets the player come to him, and at that college level, is absolutely fine. Just look at how he's constantly adjusting his body, the back straight. It's all driving with the legs. That's what you want to see. But it's that inside arm usage you want to take note of, and what is the inside arm doing? It just can't seem to get a grip. There's no strike. There's no first punch. It's just trying to grasp at straws. I always liken this sort of thing to puppy paws. I know it's a really unprofessional term, but hopefully this segment illustrates what I mean. It's just a player who can't get his hand set, constantly readjusting, trying to get a grip underneath, and he can't, so he's left outside, and it's constantly pushing, trying to find any kind of momentum. So it's not the end of the world. The willingness is there. It's just about keeping those elbows locked in. You see how far away they are from his torso. It's constantly outreaching, trying to gain leverage to compensate for that lack of length. Again, not the end of the world, but there's certainly building blocks there. If you can lock those elbows in tighter and really push towards the center, it's only going to enhance his pass protection further, which would suddenly make him, and I'm not even kidding in my opinion, ready to come in and start right away. That would not surprise me. They can just iron that bit out. Even there against Jalen Jelk, who's a much rangier defensive end, someone that's got a lot of length to him, he's still able to handle it. He's done it at such a high level of competition. The only other concern is that on those ball rushes, those power rushes, he can get driven into the hands of the quarterback, and that can be problematic at times. It's not to do with the balance or anything like that. It's just, it, honestly, I think, a consequence of what we see with the hand placement. But there are plays like this where he runs the arc so well because of that agility. Even if you are to win the first phase after the snap, there's a good chance Dillard's going to come right back at you because he can run the arc so well because he's constantly adjusting and drives with his lower body. There's a great example here. Watch him finish. That's the key. A lot of offensive linemen don't do it. They'll throw one strike, assume the job is done, and maybe just let up or turn their head to see what's going on inside. Not Dillard. He will finish every block. And although I say the hand usage is a little bit concerning with regards to getting up and under, again, it's not the biggest concern because technically it's fine. It's just like he's playing a fire extinguisher role and swatting out moves. Now watch that against Jalen Jelks. It's absolutely ridiculous. Again, one of the rangy defensive ends of this class. The arm goes over and Dillard just snaps it down and forces that outside arm to come over the top, losing all momentum and forcing the defensive end to come across the front of his body. Here he is against the power rush. Again, just holds firm, holds firm, and that is just great footwork at the bottom, keeping that straight back. The balance throughout is unreal. Look at the bend the defensive end has. Dillard just not having any of it. The hands are well placed there. This is a guy that has got tremendous upside. He's a starter at the NFL level. And now we move on to the biggest misconception imaginable, that Andre Dillard is not a good run blocker, and it is just a total myth. It's not that he's not a good run blocker, it's that Washington State runs such a funky offense, he just never had a chance to do it. Even here, he gets pulled from a tackle spot, makes a great block, and through goes the running back. I think that rare blend of athleticism and intelligence is very reminiscent of if Jason Kelsey was a tackle. To see someone that can get get to the second level the way he does with the drive that he does, you don't see it often. And do you know what? Fine, it won't show up on tape every game because Washington State don't run the ball that much. Here's a fumble, but watch the sustenance of that block. He's just like running into a brick wall. Dillard can run block. Dillard is athletic enough to be pulled on certain looks, to be used on screen passes, to get into space. It's just that Washington State rarely used him in those situations. Watch this play and more specifically the hand usage that we were mentioning earlier on. He gets Gets those hands up and under the body. It's a three-man rush. It's going to be one-on-one -on -one with maybe a little bit of help, depending on how the play unfolds. And look at that. Just keeps his arms engaged the entire time and opens enough of a hole to get the job done. Here comes the running back. And just look at that. Drives him all the way around. There is no chance the lineman is going to get a hand on that play. Great block by Andre Dillon. Here's another one. This one wasn't as good. This is where it does need work. It's some fine-tuning. Just the block gets shed a bit early, and therefore, it's almost a tackle for a loss, if not a very minimal gain, because he just lets it off a bit too soon, oversets, overpushes that weight, and unfortunately, the block gets disengaged early on. It's one of the few times you see it, and that's why Jeff Stoutland is the guy to work with Dillard, because he is so, so close to being not just an NFL starter, but what I would say, a, easily a top 15 tackle. Look at that again. 
Sustains the block, opens the hole. That one's into the very near the end zone. We'll see another one here. Not his finest moment. Oversets the block again. Crushes too much weight. And down he goes. But if that is our main concern with Andre Dillard, that run blocking is a little bit inconsistent, that sometimes his hands aren't up and under every single time, then this is a home run pick. The Eagles have the air to the throne for Jason Peters because these same problems now, I would say, arguably apply to Halapula Vardy Vita. And that's a guy that's been in the league for three years. Someone that's still needs the extra help because he can't get his feet set. Someone that does need the extra help because he's not quite as athletic, that doesn't have the awareness that Dillard has. This guy has every trait an offensive line coach could ever want. He was named an AP third team All-American for good reason. He fits this zone-based scheme. There is no questioning it. And when you put him out in one-on-one -on -one matchups, he has got so many hand techniques at his arsenal that it will keep an edge rusher constantly at a disadvantage trying to work out what they can do to beat this man. Just look at what Jalen Jelks failed to do. And that was one of my draft crushes. Someone that I thought brought a lot of explosiveness to the table. Absolutely nullified by Andre Dillard. So what do you make of the pick, guys? Let me know. Has it changed after watching this film room? Let me know down in the comments. A big shout out as well for Michael Kist from Bleeding Green Nation for a couple of the clips here. If you want to follow me on Twitter, at Liam Jenkins 21 is the place to do so. We're going to have film rooms every single day of the week for all of the Eagles drafted rookies and maybe a few undrafted rookies as well. So be sure to stick around, hit subscribe. I'll see you next time for another episode of Eagles Film Room.